If you want to gain 10 pounds of lean muscle before winter without gaining a single pound of body fat, do the next five things. Wait a second. Before you drop these five here, let's first talk about how realistic this goal is and uh, you know what, what percentage, what factors yeah. um, before we sell everybody on the idea that they could build 10 pounds of muscle with no fat. No. So, okay. So <laughs> yeah. when this episode airs- Very, very difficult to do. I just want to point that so out. So winter is- Coming. Technically December 21st. So winter technically starts December 21st. This episode will is air- Is that really when winter officially starts? Yeah. Yes. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the winter solstice? Is that what they call it? I believe so, okay. yeah. And yeah. this episode is going to air on October 6th. So that gives people 76 days. Okay. So okay. Uh, essentially two, a little over two and a half months- to build 10, by the way, 10 pounds of lean body mass is very, is visible. I mean, you can oh see God. and feel that, you know, people have gained 10 pounds on the scale, but it's water and body fat, but lean muscle. I mean, for most men, to give you guys an example, this would translate different to women because they have different, uh, you know, where they hold their muscle tends to be different, but typically for a man to add a full inch to his arms, they need to gain about 10 pounds of lean muscle. So this is a good, like yeah, this is a pretty fill you out. Pretty damn good goal. Is it realistic? I'd say uh, for the right person who's super consistent, this can happen. Does that mean everyone can do this? No. Uh, but I think if you follow the steps we're going to go through, you're going to build some lean muscle without getting body fat. It's pretty similar. I know we kind of touched on this when we were talking about the Goldilocks zone and like how like all these factors pretty much have to align uh, perfectly. But if you've been consistent and you've been uh, pretty dedicated already and uh, in the gym also with your eating habits, uh, you can just crank a few of these knobs and get pretty far. Uh, there's some examples of what, where I think this is easier than, uh, than other examples. For example, uh, someone going through what I'm going through right now would be somebody who would be a great candidate. For like someone who had muscle, lost yep. it. Yeah. Get the muscle memory, yeah, that's a, everything. That's going your, right. Yeah. Which, believe it or not, is, is probably more people. Now, obviously, I lost a lot, right? Saying that I, at one point, just five, six years ago, I had 50 more pounds of muscle on me is a big, that's a huge difference. Yeah. Probably not a lot of people can say that they lost that much muscle. But a lot of people uh, that have trained consistently in the past go through periods of time where they fall off on and off the wagon. And right. so if you're somebody who's decided you're motivated before the holiday season, like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to get back on my game here. And mm -hmm. you've lifted in the past. You have more of an advantage doing this than say somebody yeah. who's been consistent for the last year, nonstop been doing everything nutritionally. Mm -hmm. everything. They are going to have a, a, a harder time. It's not impossible, but they're gonna have a harder time accomplishing it versus the person who has already built regaining. Uh, yeah. yeah. Regaining. regaining muscle happens a lot faster. Yep. I'd, I'd say the second, of course, men, men are, are going to build more body mass faster. Uh, number one, we're primed to do so more so than women. And number two, we also just have a larger frame, which takes us to the next one, which is people with a larger frame are going to have, uh, it's going to be easier for them to gain 10 pounds of muscle on the scale yeah. because they're just bigger, uh, yeah. just much bigger people. And then of course, there are genetic differences between individuals and most people are somewhere in the middle. So if you were to look at the range of muscle building, let's say genetics, these are the two extremes over here is like, you know, muscle wasting disease type genetics over here is like pro bodybuilders. If you go in the middle of the middle, that's where most people are. Most people are in the middle of the middle. Some people more towards bodybuilders, some people more towards the other end. Um, and the more you are towards genetically gifted, the easier this is going to be. And I haven't run into, honestly, super genetically gifted in the, in the 25 plus years I've been in the space. But when I have been around them, you could tell. So if this is you, you know. If you're like guessing, I think yeah. I might have those muscle building. You don't even you don't. need this episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, you know if this is uh, if this is you. And again, I got to say this again: um, building muscle is is a game of grams. What I mean by that is, you know, uh, before you gain a pound of body fat, you have to gain grams and ounces. Muscle is a is is a slow process. Muscle gain is a slow process. Now, why am I saying this? Because consistency is what puts you in the positive when it comes to building muscle because your body is pretty much almost always either positive with muscle building or negative with muscle building. Now, if you build no muscle, it's because the positive balanced out with the negative. 
But for the most part, your body's either in positive protein synthesis or negative protein synthesis. And what makes you build muscle is when you're positive more often than negative. What makes you lose muscles when you're in the negative more often than positive. So the more consistent you are well, with, with what we're about to say, the more likely you are to be more in the positive more often of the time. I think part of, of, of this is great. This is kind of a great conversation because it, um, it's a topic that I've been trying to talk about with my whole journey right now is this, what we call this Goldilocks zone. And I explained that it looks like when you, when you zoom out at 30 days and 30 days has gone by and I've uh, added five pounds of muscle and I've lost five pounds of fat, it looks like I built muscle and lost body fat at the same time. But that's not really what happened. That's what it looks like when you zoom out and you look at 30 days. What it is more, what is more likely or what happened is there's periods of times in that 30 days where my body is anabolic and then there's times when it's catabolic. Building or losing. And because I'm hovering around the maintenance calories so closely, it's dipping in and out of that so much and it's never extremely swinging one way or another. And why that's so good to not extremely swing one or the other is if you are trying to build muscle and you extremely swing on the pro positive calories to be anabolic, you risk potentially some of those calories being partitioned over to building or to adding body fat right. because you sw you swung so hard. Same thing is true the opposite way. If you're in a cut and you're trying to reduce calories to lose body fat and you swing too hard, you potentially pare down muscle. And so the Goldilocks zone is when we are hovering around maintenance so close that when we zoom out in 30 days, it looks like we built muscle and lost body fat at the exact, exact same time. But really what happened was you were constantly moving in and out of this. I'm either anabolic or catabolic. And it's so close to where you need to be maintenance that you don't ever risk losing muscle when you're, you're catabolic and you don't ever risk adding body fat when you're anabolic. Hey, sorry to interrupt you. Look, we work with a company called Viori. They have the world's best athleisure wear. And if you go through our link, you'll get 20% off. All right, back to the show. The reason why this is so hard is because it's hard to be consi consistently accurate, but we'll give you some tips. Uh, we're going to get to that. So it's, it's just hard to be consistently accurate, but also because there is a small anabolic effect from eating more calories than your body needs to build muscle. In other words, gaining some body fat sometimes also helps you build some muscle. And, and so why does that make this difficult? Because if you do more than you need, and then you notice more muscle, but you gain some body fat, you might be like, who cares? I'm going to keep moving that direction. But we're going to talk about how to do this without gaining body fat, which is much more of a science and requires much more discipline. And, and it, it requires, again, dogged consistency, like ridiculous, ridiculous consistency. Mm -hmm. All right. So step one, obviously, you want to build muscle. You want to build 10 pounds of muscle. You need to lift weights. But we're going to give you the recipe for lifting weights, the split that works best for 85 to 90% of people watching and listening to this right now, which is a three-day-a-week full-body workout full body routine. workout. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you work the whole body each of those days. For most people, this routine will build more muscle, more strength than any other split that you're ever going to try. And you know, if you're listening, like, well, I got to be in the gym more than that. You don't. Uh, this routine right here, in fact, built some of the most impressive physiques before anabolic steroids were really ever a thing. Like back in the day, you're looking at John Grimmick and Steve Reeves and those guys, back when m m most of them didn't even know what anabolic steroids were, um, they were impressively built and incredibly strong. This is how they all lifted weights. It wasn't until later where the, in my opinion, the addition of anabolic steroids and be able to stay anabolic all the time and this crazy recovery where bodybuilders increased the volume so dramatically they had to split the body up into mm -hmm. body parts. So for most people, this is the this three day a week split Monday, Wednesday, Friday is gonna is gonna build the most muscle. I think there's multiple factors to that, right? Like so, uh, there's easier. It's easier to program in these compound lifts. I think in that sort of structure, um, it's it's easier to to get like the right balance of volume. 
in uh, in the right amount of recovery in between uh, for your body to actually adapt, uh, which is a major factor. A lot of people don't really consider the fact that you need that that extra amount of time for your body to fully recover. So that way, you know, you're actually building. You're not just uh, you know, recovering from the the insult that you've provided your body. Such a huge point, Justin. Probably the most important point talking about why a three day routine. Because in my experience, clients that are motivated to move the needle this fast are also uh, uh, motivated to do more, thinking they're going to get more in return. And because we are hovering around this maintenance slash little deficit minus little surplus. You want to send just the right signal to the body. You do not want to be hammering it so hard that you're stuck in this recovery trap and your body's never adapting and building muscle. That's a for sure recipe for you to stall and plateau and not see the results. And I think in my experience, most people that are highly motivated to see results and see them as fast as possible tend to overdo it more than they tend to not do enough. I right. think that's the, yep. the most common the, thing you see. The 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 most correlated uh, aspect of physical performance that is most strongly connected to muscle growth. In other words, if you were to examine human performance and you were to pick an attribute of uh, performance that was most closely connected to muscle growth, there, I mean, head and shoulders above all the others would be strength, Okay. Nothing translates to muscle like building strength or training when you're strong. That's the other part of this, right? So, all right, where am I going? Well, if you train your whole body Monday, Wednesday, Friday, let's let's just talk about legs. If you did three sets of legs on Monday, three sets of legs on Wednesday, and three sets of legs on Friday, you're going to be lifting heavier each of those workouts than if you did nine sets on Monday. If you did all nine sets on Monday – because fatigue kicks in and sets in, you're now working more on endurance and stamina and less on pure strength. So that alone makes a big difference. Plus, you're also practicing the lifts more often. You're more likely to do the best exercises because you have the strength and energy uh, to do them. And because and this, there's data that supports this, but it's still murky. But again, you ask strength coaches, they'll, they'll, they'll back me up on this. Uh, if you take the total volume but divide up that volume over multiple workouts versus doing it all in one, it it, it seems to send a louder muscle building signal, probably because that muscle building signal is being sent three times that week versus just once. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that makes a big difference. I think that you're, especially if you're a natural athlete, I think that you yes, are especially. taking advantage of keeping that signal high because what is it, 24 to, or I mean, 48 to 72 hours before that signal kind of starts to dip right. back down. And so if you're the person that does this upper body split or you do this one muscle or one muscle group per uh, per week and you hammer it, well, sure, you get a big loud signal for the first two days and then it really starts to dip off and come back down. And then you don't have anything that's saying, oh, go build muscle on my legs for another four days until you hit it again versus dividing that up over three days in a week. It's like just as that starts to dip back down, you hit it again. And just as it starts to dip yeah. down and you hit it again. And I think that frequency, not to mention you also choose way better exercises that are going to build more Which we're muscle. Gonna, let's, yeah. let's talk about that, right? So when it comes to... Now, uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of strength training or resistance training exercises, and all of them have some value in the right application. But we're talking about just building muscle. Okay, This episode is about gaining 10 pounds of muscle in like 76 days, right? When it comes to building muscle, not all exercises are equal. Not even close. Uh, so... The exercises that you should be doing on a weekly basis in these workouts, maybe not in every workout, but at least once in each of these workouts, are should be the ones that build the most muscle. And the exercise about I'm about to list will build more muscle than the next 15 exercises combined. That's how powerful of muscle builders they are. These are. So the first one is the barbell squat. Then you have the deadlift, the bench press, the and the overhead press. Like, and you could probably throw in a barbell row. Uh, with that as well. Those exercises just build. In fact, if you just did those five exercises, including the row, uh, you build lots of muscle. Just, In fact, a lot of people would be great just doing those exercises alone. I, I don't know if you heard the clip. I just did an interview with Doug Bops. Uh, we both did. And um, he was asking for like this advice for, you know, and in regards to like the obesity epidemic. And I said, you know, what's crazy is if you literally took two pieces of advice, one of them was 
following a whole food diet was one piece of advice. The second piece of advice was literally take these five exercises and just practice them. I said two times a week. Like we're yeah. obviously talking about optimal building more muscle, burning yeah. more body fat in a short period of time. So this is why three times a week makes sense for this person. But we would literally solve the obesity epidemic if everybody just did that. Like mm -hmm. literally eat as much as you want, so long as it's whole foods and literally just do these five lifts, practice these five lifts two times a week and you would be blown away oh, right. at what a, an incredible healthy strength. You're not going to go win a bodybuilding show, but you most certainly will build an impressive, strong, healthy physique just literally practicing It's those foundational. Moves. I mean, this is where, I mean, it, it's kind of funny because uh, I was fortunate to have a weight training class when I was in high school and we focused just on these lifts and, uh, you know, broke them down because they're, each each part of these lifts have has its own uh, unique sort of uh, 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 attribute to them that you have to like learn the skill of it. You have to learn and, and really break it down. Uh, but then we get away from it and we we try to add on more and we try to add all these different variations and um, you know different machines and different things to to target different muscles of our body. But when you always come back to it because it it's the one that that keeps consistently building and, and moving the needle i wish time. that i had a story like that i it's because this and part of why i'm so passionate about this conversation was because i'm on the other side i made the mistake for over a decade of being the guy who was doing all the creative silly exercises mm. like avoiding the big five i mean yeah i might have bench pressed here and there maybe occasionally did like a shoulder press more often not a bodybuilder military type press and eh, sometimes i rode but i was doing all the machines all mm -hmm. the creative stuff and i was i was not doing the squat the deadlift the overhead press like consistently and i look back now and i look back how hard and consistent and how much i trained in my early 20s to the amount that I have to train to build a better, to build a better physique at older in age with way less effort by just focusing on those lifts. It makes me so angry that I didn't, either I didn't listen or I didn't have the right person communicating to that to me when I was in my twenties, because I didn't do that. I totally missed out on, on those early gains. Had I just focused on those lifts. Hey, sorry to interrupt. It's October maps. Muscle mommy is 50% off half off. If you're interested, click on the link below. All right, back to the show. And just some personal um, experience with this. I, you know, when I really was training a lot of clients, there was a period of time there when I got uh, a, a decent amount of clients that were men in their 20s that wanted to build muscle. It was a, like I trained one dude and then he recommended his friend. And next thing you know, I'm training like these six guys. Now, the thing about it was that they all worked out. So none of them were complete beginners. They all lifted weights, they all worked out, they all trained the whole body. And the different, what I did was, is I gave them good workout programming. They all followed splits. So we went three days a week and then I had them do the exercises that I said, uh, very consistently. And none of them did them consistently. Definitely not a squat or deadlift. Some of them, they, they all bench pressed, overhead press. They didn't do a full range of motion. Barbell row, they never did. Squat and deadlift, they never did. I can tell you exactly how much of a difference in muscle mass just doing these exercises uh, did for them. And it was on average seven pounds. Mm -hmm. On average, seven pounds of lean body mass, each one of these guys gained. And it was mainly from getting strong at these exercises. Myself, uh, you know, when I was a, a, a freshman in high school and working out, uh, the the year between freshman and sophomore year, I gained so much muscle because I met a group of power lifters that, and by the, by then, I, back then I was training my whole body. It wasn't like I avoided legs and did, a, I did leg press and hack squat and leg extensions, leg curls. And I did all the, you know, cable rows and that kind of stuff. But these guys taught me primarily uh, how to bench press and deadlift. And I gained, I mean, as a kid, I gained almost 15 pounds of muscle uh, or, 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 or weight, I should say, on the scale. Some of it was body fat, but most of it was muscle. And I got, I got really strong, strong at squats and deadlifts. So these exercises, you want to talk about packing on muscle? Yeah. If you miss these exercises, you're not going to build nearly as it's much muscle. It's the loudest signal you'd be able to provide. Yes. Right? Like hands down. Yes. Next up is to eat your target body weight in grams of protein. So if you want to gain 10 pounds of lean body mass, that is your target in grams of protein. In other words, if you're 150 pounds and you want to weigh 160 because you want to gain 10 pounds of muscle, you need to eat 160 grams of protein every single day. Do not miss this at all. Now, this one alone 
makes a tremendous difference. And I would see people gain muscle just from bumping their protein. In fact, a lot of people experience this by taking a protein shake, believing the shake has something magical, when in reality it was just you increase your protein. I mean, I attribute the entire protein shake market to this. The reason why it's so popular and it's been a staple in so many uh, people's lives when it comes to their fitness journey is because you do see a significant difference on it. And it's not the magic in the shake. It's that most people miss their protein intake yes. so much that simply adding a 30 gram sh protein shake to diet significantly improves the result. But I would definitely take it a step further and say, track and make sure that, I mean, I'm going through this process again. I don't know how many times I've done this in my career where I go back to kind of tracking to get an idea where I'm at. And I am trying with all my might to hit protein. I think about it. And then when I go to bed, I'm thinking about tomorrow morning, I'm going to eat this and then I'm going to eat that. Like I'm like prioritizing it that much. And I still fall short on many days. Mm -hmm. So in, and if you were to ask me probably, you know, 10, 15 years ago, if I were to assess the way I was eating, if I was considered that, I would say, oh man, it's high protein. I'm eating four or five times a day and there's always a big piece of meat involved in it or eggs. Like I'm eating a lot of protein. But when you actually measure it out and track, a lot of times you might be eating enough protein to be survive and be considered okay and hitting what your your bare essentials. But there's a difference between the bare essentials protein and then there's a difference to maximal benefits for building muscle. Yeah. And it's closer to that one-to-one -one that you're talking about, which I would venture to say 90% of the people that think they're hitting that are not hitting that. No, in fact... Uh I bet you right now, if, all, if if you're listening to this and you already strength train and it's not a terrible workout and you're doing you know your, your workouts and stuff and you start tracking and you know that you're not hitting this number, just doing this, not even following the other steps, not even do the other stuff I said, just hitting your protein targets, you'll see a nice three to five pound Profound. in lean body mass. Profound. Just from doing that alone. Yeah. That's how big of a difference. And, and now you want this to come... If it, if it can from whole natural foods, okay, that's the most important. That's 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 also important, and also start your day off with high protein because it is very hard to hit this protein target, especially because it's going to be ten grams above mm -hmm. what your current body weight is. This is a difficult one, and it, and it becomes impossible. You know, if if like me, I'll try and eat two hundred grams of protein or more in a day. If I don't have fifty grams of protein for breakfast, it's not happening. Yeah. It's, it, you literally have to train yourself uh, mm -hmm. to, to do what you're saying and seek it out. It's not intuitive because, it, first of all, it's like satiating, which is already like a signal. Your body, like, I'm good. I'm, you know, everything's fine. And it literally have to go beyond that to be able to get, especially in a, a condensed window like this, we're trying to optimize. Like, it's a huge importance to give you those building materials. Totally. Now, next up is to every night, and again, this, is a, this has to be consistent, get eight hours of good sleep every single night. Yeah. Sleep is where the majority of the repair and growth occurs. Not only that, but suboptimal sleep is a fantastic way to take your hormone profile and make it one that is pro-fat gain and, and anti-muscle gain, okay? Lack of sleep makes your body not want to build muscle, and it makes your body want to gain body fat. There was an interesting study, I've quoted it a few times, where they took two groups of people, put them on the same calorie restricted diet. So they all ate in a calorie deficit. Okay. It was all controlled. The difference was one group got bad sleep. The other group got great sleep. The group that got bad sleep, here's a, you know, here's the funny thing. They all lost the same amount of weight, but the group that got bad sleep lost twice as much muscle mm. of the weight that they lost because it literally primes your body to tear down or tear it, break down this very active tissue because lack of sleep is uh, is stressful. Let me tell you the most common mistakes that you will see, the, 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 and these will be people that are hitting protein and training hard. I can't tell you uh, the first tip where we talk about lifting weights three times a week, how often I see this, the uh, over application of intensity and volume. So they're training four, five, six days a week, hoping they're gonna get the results faster, paired with not getting adequate sleep and recovery and repair. The combination of the two of those is one of the most frustrating things that lead to plateaus with so many people because they're like, man, I'm hitting protein. Man, I'm training good exercises. I don't get it. I'm training five days a week. But their sleep is shit and they're over they're over applying intensity. And that is a recipe for you not seeing results. And it's so hard to, for people to wrap their brain around because 
They know, oh, I know protein's important. Oh, I, I know I got to go to the gym consistently. I'm doing that. Oh, I'm doing those exercises. They're doing a lot of the right things. But that sleep and recovery goes so hand in hand with the, the amount of training volume and intensity that you apply. And if those are off, you could be perfect everywhere else and you're not going to see the results that you want to see. 100%. All right. Last, and this one really that I'm about to say speaks to the, and not gain any body fat part of what I said at the beginning of the episode, which is avoid he heavily processed foods. If your diet is made up of heavily processed foods, you will overeat. Okay. They are engineered to make you overeat. There's lots of time and money that's been invested in developing these foods to make them so that you overeat them, and you're not going to win. You're not going to be able to eat the appropriate amount to build muscle and not gain body fat. So if you simply avoided heavily processed foods and hit the protein targets and did everything else we said, the odds that you'll gain muscle and it's going to be lean with no body fat is high. If you include heavily processed foods, the odds that you'll gain muscle and fat becomes very high. The thing that I love about this tip or that I find interesting, and this is my personal journey and then with clients, is that if I have a client who is not excited about weighing and measuring every bit of everything that they consume and tracking it like to a T, if they just ate whole foods, listened to their body when it's hungry, fed it every time it felt that way, but just made a choice to eat whole foods and eat the protein first, it would solve this. Yes. I didn't have to have them weigh, track of that. If you're somebody that has a really hard time eating whole foods and processed foods makes its way into your diet more often than not, then it becomes paramount that you weigh and track everything. Because you will overeat otherwise. You will, because they are engineered to do that. And if you listen to those same signals that will guide you in the right direction with whole foods, it will certainly send you in the wrong direction with processed foods. And I just want to make that clear because I don't want to demonize processed foods. I utilize processed foods all the time. Greek yogurt is considered that. I eat that every single night, but I'm also tracking diligently. And I also understand that these processed foods can send that signal for me to want to eat more food. And so you have to understand that we're not demonizing that and saying you can't have processed foods. We're just saying that if you do avoid them, it makes this so much easier for your success. If you choose to include them a lot, you got to be really careful about making sure you're staying right around that maintenance, the slight surplus, or that can get out of control really fast. Totally. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps, just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. All right, do we have questions, Doug? First one is, should I track calories as well? Okay, tracking calories will get you much more specific. And what that would look like is you would track for a week, you would get what you're averaging, and then you would add maybe 400 calories above that um, while hitting the protein targets to, to do that. I think that would make it more likely uh, that you you hit this target and goal. But I think if you just hit your protein targets and don't try to avoid eating anything except for heavily processed foods, in other words, don't be like, I'm hitting my protein, but I'm avoiding carbs or I'm not going to... Then, then if you're eating the protein, not trying to avoid food, eat when you're hungry, stick to whole foods, I think you'll be okay. If I have the option, if a client asks me, like, do you want me to track? And I say, will you track everything? And they say, yeah. Then I say, yes. The reason why you hear us give advice the way we give advice is we recognize that a majority of people won't. Right. A majority of people or a majority of people will say they will and then they don't. And so we've had to figure out uh, from years and years of experience training these people that say they will and then don't, how do I get them to get the results they want knowing that they're not going to do some things that would really help me out like tracking? Therefore, you hear these tips like avoid the heavily processed food, just focus on the protein. And that's going to help pretty much most people get there. But man, if I got an option, if you're willing to track and, and do that, then absolutely more data that we have. I mean, I would say that goes with testing your body fat first. I would say that would be tracking your steps. Tra like, Man, the, the more you're willing to track... Uh, the easier it's going to be for us to make adjustments along the way. But I think the idea of this episode was to give you guys like some takeaways that if you just did this, you should be able to get these results from that. Next question is what supplements should I take? Ooh. Oh, creatine for sure. 
creatine for sure. Whether you want to build muscle, burn body fat, improve your health, but you will build more muscle on creatine. Um, your muscles will be more hydrated, better pumped. They're going to be stronger. And, they, and, and it seems to contribute to faster uh, muscle building. I'm going to add EAAs to that now hmm. because this person is, we already know that they're going to be catabolic at some times. Uh, because they're hovering around close to maintenance to a deficit sometimes because they're trying to reduce body fat and build muscle. So I think the benefits of having that just simply as a just in case you have days where you don't. Now, if you're listening to this and you're like, your goal protein is 150 and you crush 180 to 200 every day. Okay, well then maybe this is not the supplement for you. But if you you know you're somebody who has to really go after the protein to hit your protein targets, and you know that you miss sometimes, then I now believe that having those EAAs uh, by your side would be very beneficial. Yeah, and then next would be protein powder. If it's very hard for you to hit your protein targets, uh, then a protein powder can be quite valuable. But you you don't have to take any of the stuff that we said. You could do it without those things, but they can it's help. It's mainly for convenience and mm -hmm. to make sure you're on target. Next question is, should I include cardio? Uh, no, not, not no. Cardio isn't going to really help you build muscle unless your cardiovascular fitness is holding you back from doing your strength training exercise. Like if your if your cardio is so bad that yep. you can't do more than three reps of a squat because you're out of breath, then you probably want to incorporate some cardio. That being said, for everybody else, just walk every day. Walk every day. It's good for your health. Yeah. Um, it's it's a great activity. Helps facilitate recovery. But like traditional forms of cardio aren't muscle building, and, and they would just be taking away from the recovery reserves that we need for building muscle. I'm glad you brought that. I honestly would have said no, it just you know yeah. out of the, out of this jump. But like in that situation, if you're the type of person that uh, will always do low reps and and will not, will have a lot of rest periods already established, uh, and then want to switch. Which again, I don't know if this really made it on there, but switching your focus training wise, you know, will help a, a create a new stimulus. So to be able to kind of switch into higher reps, uh, you know, that's kind of where too you can you can look at that as another way of adding a bit of cardio. Yeah, I would I would strongly say no, just because the title of this episode is like, the goal is to build 10 pounds of muscle as fast as we possibly can. There is uh, the only benefit you can make the case for with me on uh, where cardio helps is if you can't do more than 10, 10 reps of squats because you're so your endurance yeah. sucks so bad. But then even then, I would make the argument of, okay, let's go build that endurance through lifting weights. Well, yeah, get it through the reps. And, and get it through the reps. Right. And so versus – because doing – doing traditional cardio where you're actually running or elevating the heart rate to the cardio threshold is uh, catabolic. It's not It's not pro building muscle. It's not ideal uh, for this person and their specific goal in this short period of time. That is not me saying that cardio isn't extremely beneficial and healthy and good for this. If the person was, I want to be healthy, the be most healthy I can be in the next four weeks, or the, the goal was, hey, I want to lose body 10 pounds of body fat the fast I possibly can. Okay, well, then you would hear me communicate this differently because then we, it's a different goal. But if the goal is, build maximal muscle in a short period of time, then for most people, it's no. most people, this is not going to help our cause. So it's why too, if you're following along the series that I'm doing right now, because the main goal is for me to build as much muscle as I can right now to build my metabolism, uh, naturally before I in introduce any cardio, like you don't see me doing any of that for that exact reason. All right. I know you liked that episode. If you did check this one out, 30% body fat for men. This is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right? Of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body.